unequal spacing repeats every 12 notes. So that's, this is kind of a problem. You end up having to shave some of the keys narrower. So I never thought about the, the all these years playing piano since first grade, I never thought about the fact that every single white key is a totally different shape. They're all different shapes. So you can't just reorder them. It doesn't fit. So it's you know, a little frustrating. When you try to put two black notes together, you can't avoid leaving a space. I didn't make those. I'm actually a little jealous of the top one because that's one of my mathematician friends in, in Germany. He made that as the second Bullen pure scale keyboard that I know of since the, the first one since Heinz Bullen built it back in 77. But I thought I'd outdo him and try to do one without the missing key. He left a key out. <laughs> so here's some of the ones I made. So you might think, well, they look prettier. There's no spaces. Well, <laughs> the bottom one. But um, some of the keys are narrower. So a, a real pianist would hate this. You can see that it's really hard to see, but some of them are skinnier than others. These are skinny. Look at that one. Someone actually paid me to make this nightmare keyboard. <laughs> I literally had nightmares when I was giving classical piano recitals as a kid. <laughs> this, that I would sit down and play, and it, it, the piano would look like that. <laughs> Um, 17 notes per octave. For those of you that know piano, stare at that a while, it'll make you dizzy. For a similar effect, not quite. Our regular piano has three, and two, three, two. This is 13 notes per octave. It's just slightly stretched in our 12 notes, so it's horrible, horrible tuning. And I can't see the keyboard very well, so I put these little planet stickers in the octaves. So that's actually a C. And up here, you know, honestly, I can't remember which one is C. So some tunings are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, J, K, A, B, C, D, E, you know, sort of over. So we add extra letters. For some reason, we skipped the I. And I made a bull and pure scale tuning without leaving any notes off. So all I did was use a black note for a white note, paint it white. But again, the, some of the keys are skinnier and some are fatter. And there's just no way to make it perfect. So we really need to, you know, this is another area that people could get into. So if someone's like an, an engineer, someone likes to use their hands and make things and design on the computer, you know, um, the shapes and stuff, this is an area that we need your help. Would you like to? <laughs> I want to ask you why you can't have equal space keys, equal sized keys. Is it just a production problem, or is there something about fingers that's in it? Well, I, mean, I don't know, maybe stare at this a while and it'll sort of, it just doesn't work out. So, you want the keys to be equally spaced on the top, right, and also on the bottom. Well, here's another version of the full and pure scale keyboard. So, if you have three white keys in a row, that's a problem. Three white keys in a row just never fits. Because the black notes so imagine this had to be a white note, and it would have to be skinny. So if you put three white notes in a row, you actually have to skip a note, and then remap it on the sound. So it's a problem putting two black notes together or three white notes together. So if we, so there's a regular piano. It's sort of equally spaced on the top, almost, but not quite. And like I said, the almost not equally spaced repeats every 12 keys. If we try to make this volunteer scale even on the top and even on the bottom, you end up with keys that look like this. And that's just how it works out. And you can stare at, stare at it for hours going, why? <laughs> H, J. So that's J flat. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's a lot of fun. So I had a, a brilliant get around. I just chopped off the fat part of the white keys. Then you can rearrange it any way you want. You can put 10 black keys in a row, 10 white keys in a row, and it works out. And the pianists hate it because they're like, where's the extended part of the white keys? But um, I made this kind of in haste, ready for, uh, there was a whole conference all about the bull and pier scale tuning uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, I wanted to bring some fancy keyboards for it. And I thought, oh, it's a problem.
them to build it and they chopped off that part and then it looked ugly so I took the case off and built a new fancy looking Star Trek thing to hold it with. And, um, it evolved into the furry car. But so you play one hand wrapped around, so you actually play one hand backwards coming from the other way like a cello. But they got rid of the problem of the unequal, you know. Did you have a question up there? Major is white, and then the minor third is black key. And in other tunings, there aren't really ma in Bolin Pierce scale. We've decided, and other people have decided long before I did, um, that there is really no major minor. Some of the modes they came up with, with you know, the diatonic keys, they called major and minor. They're German words. I can't remember right now. Um, how do you say major and minor in German? Um, but they decided there really is no equivalent to major and minor. And a lot of tunings there isn't necessarily an equivalent. That's just something we came up with after we had the, the tuning for many centuries. And here are just some other ones. I love the 10 note prop the keyboard. I think it's really elegant. Just three black keys. <laughs> so if you really insist, you can play them in a normal way. But they're meant to be played vertically like that. There's my mom. <laughs> so here's me getting down and dirty building them. And this is what we do. We just take all the keys out and I drew it out and I stared at it and took out the guts and rearranged it. And it's all loads, loads of fun. But, you know, it's amateurish. We really need real engineers to help us build these wonderful new keyboards and start from scratch. Because when we go from these, you know, I bought a you know, cute little keyboard and took it apart. It's just got that spacing problem. So we need, I have an idea, I did my show with someone who had it. <laughs> but um, a, a way, an idea where they would all just be equally spaced no matter what, and you can <coughs> rearrange it. And there's all kinds of people, this is one of my friends, uh, he might actually be able to show up one day, uh, Bronze Sword. He took apart a piano and turned it into 16 notes from him. <coughs> Fun stuff. He builds guitars. So this is what, uh, he came up with this removable fret thing, I think. Maybe other people have done it. So you can buy one guitar and then have a bunch of different fret boards for different tunings. <coughs> On a guitar, it's easy. All you have to do is put the frets closer together or farther apart. And of course, you can unequally space them. They're even staggered. Ones where instead of a fret all the way across, they're staggered for these special just intonation and all that kind of stuff. So they have it easy, but not really. It's really hard because he actually starts from scratch with the wood and everything. And so there are other ideas for keyboards that I think are brilliant. Um, this one was invented by Peter Davies, British man. And, um, he invented this layout. There are a lot of different people experimenting with different versions of this whole hexagon idea. But the idea is it's more of a two-dimensional piano. So this is just a piano. So the word sono is a generic thing. It's kind of like saying piano. Um, if you play straight up, it's fifths. And if you play up this way, it's thirds. C, D, E. And then if you play that way, it's minor thirds. And it's really little, kind of little. So each key is about the size of a, a, a nickel. I think they need to be bigger so you can really fit your body into it. They're kind of little nerdy keys that you play. But I really I have a, one of these. So I've rearranged the black and white notes for different tunings. And that's one thing I'm still working on is to try to figure out the best layout for the black and white notes for all the different tunings for, for this. Is that but, the same as Peter Maxwell Davis, the composer? No. Davies? Davies, no. So here's just some of the ones, just to show you. Here's a full and pure scale. They're all slightly different. 10 notes per octave, 19 notes per octave. <coughs> kind of want a lot of black notes for that one. Um, 19 notes per octave, the reason a lot of people use this. So anyone that wants to get into microtonality, you could just get a hold of any cheap keyboard. They're $50 nowadays. And you just you can get some even some free software to generate the sound. 
19 notes per octave is good beginner's microtonal scale. And I used, I really got stuck in this tuning, almost stuck in a rut using this tuning way too much. I'm finally like getting away from it. Because if you think of it this way, you, you can have a diatonic scale that sounds really similar to the one we have. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And then you just have extra black notes. And the white notes are actually a little out of tune. They're not exactly that what I was saying. It's a little off, a little weird. It actually turns out that the thirds, like I showed you in that early, way earlier chart, the thirds are more in tune than, a, than the regular tuning. And the fourths and fifths are a little dissonant. But you can kind of compose as if you're just composing normal music, and then you just have these extra black notes. And another <coughs> idea, um, I wish I could actually just click on this and play it right now, but it's not very good. It's just a picture. But I came up with this idea for a triathlon and a triatalyzer. You click on any square, and it'll play this note, and it'll play one of these notes, and one of these notes. So it's a triad you hear all at once. And the ones that are, are dark are the most consonant, pretty chords, and then the lighter ones are dissonant. So you can kind of just, and this is entirely redundant, the, the top part's exactly the mirror image. So you can just click around and find some good chords. And I never use it because I don't really compose with chords. Like I said, I use melodies. But this is a good thing. I, I'd like to make one of these for a whole bunch of different tunings just to give people if they want to try it out. I used a program called Max MSP to do it. But what would be better is to have a, actually have someone working on it now for me. Hopefully they'll actually finish it. To do this idea for an iPhone app that would just be a free thing. So I came up with some chord progressions um, during my time at NYU just by ear. And then later tried to find out what mode it was in. And so you know, I did a lot of research there. But it's kind of fun to show that same dissonance chart um, that I just showed you lined up to with the chord. So you can see this one is a little consonant chord and that one's more dissonant. And this chord progression is more bland, it doesn't really change that much. But it's it's very subtle. So let me play let me play some of those chord progressions. These are also in the volunteer scale. So I have a bunch of those. 
So the other area is you got your nice keyboard, you have your idea what tuning you want to do, but you got to have something to make the actual sound. So I have carefully selected synthesizers over the years. So uh, here's a hardware synthesizer. Really, all you need to do is change the slope of the keyboard. So when you play up a normal piano, a normal keyboard or whatever, it'll modify the pitch as you go up, right? Obviously, it changes the pitch as you go up. So all you really need to do is change it more or change it less. You can think of that as the slope of the keyboard. And we, we MIDI electronic music people like it to anchor on middle C. So the middle C, no matter what tuning you're in, is just going to be a specific frequency, always the same. So that the keyboard's anchored on that note, it's like a seesaw. So this might be 19 notes per octave, this might be 10 notes per octave. It's tipped a little the other way, whereas this is just a re regular tuning. That's all, we just need one dial to just do that. So it'll have different words. This actually calls it a tuning slope. And you just put in a number which is almost arbitrary. It's mm, <coughs> 10 notes per octave is 120 cents per key. 19 notes per octave is 0.63 something. So you can't get it quite right. On this keyboard, it has to be 62 or 64. Can't get it in between. It's not a fine enough scale. So for all these years, I've been composing music in a completely out of tune 19 notes per octave scale anyway. So the octaves are stretched. But I don't care. It's close enough for rock and roll. And then here's another synth. This, this one they call it the keyboard modulating the oscillator. So wherever you see the word oscillator, that's where you go to change the pitch. So you make the keyboards modulate the oscillator a little more or a little less. And this one has a completely arbitrary scale. 23 doesn't mean anything really. And then this one is another hardware keyboard. You can actually tell how many cents per key. Instead of oscillator, they call it key map. So you just have to go in and find where to do it and how to do it. And they're all mostly the same idea. 99% or more of synthesizers, you can't microtune. They don't give you access to that parameter. You're just stuck in the 12 tone tuning. Yamaha, they thought they were brilliant. They have you enter the frequency in hertz for every single key across the entire keyboard. So microtonalists love that because it's completely flexible and open. I hate it because I, I just want to use equal tempered tuning. So I just want one dial to just say, change the slope of the keyboard. And then there's an old analog synth that I have and it's got that one knob that I love. You just turn it and it does it. However, you can only make it have smaller steps. They didn't think that you want to turn it the other way. You can't turn the knob the other way to make the 10 notes per octave or 9 notes per octave. It's a problem with everything. So then now we have these virtual synthesizers on the computer. All my students, they only want to use computer synthesizers. They don't want the hardware synthesizers anymore. But it's the same kind of idea if you can find one that lets you do it. So here you just modulate the pitch with the keyboard. Easy enough. Completely arbitrary scale, though. So you, you kind of just have to do it by ear. Um, so I'll show you, I can show you a bunch of these, but well, it turns out a whole bunch of uh, computer-based ones that I bought, because you could do that one parameter, it didn't even matter, because I realized later, they allow you to load a tuning file. <laughs> I was not keeping up with the technology. Yeah? Um, 